depending on how long you've been a developer for, you may or may not remember the marquee. And this was a marquee tag in HTML that allowed you to scroll text from one side of the screen to another side of the screen. What we're going to be doing in this video is we're going to be rebuilding this effect, but we're going to be using CSS3 animations to do this. So this is what it looks like. You can see this scrolling across the screen. You can do it either way. You can change the text size. You can even scroll uh, something that isn't text if you wanted to. But let's take a look at how we build this very, very simple effect. So inside of my text editor, I have a document here and I've linked in a main.css style sheet, which is located within a CSS folder. So if you don't already have these files created and you don't have a document layout created and you are following along, go ahead and do this. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do is actually mark up this. So I'm going to create an H1 tag here. This can be any um, block level element, to be honest. I'm going to give this a class of marquee. So inside of here then I want a span. Now this will become obvious later. Uh, basically the reason for this is we can't actually move this H1 from left to right reliably. We have to have the H1 as the outer container and then the span inside will be the bit that moves just because we need some kind of wrapper for this to determine where it needs to scroll to and from. So I'm going to say this is a marquee, remember me. Okay, so that's all of the markup that we need. So at the moment on the page, we get the following. You can obviously go ahead and customize the text. Like I said a moment ago, you can do whatever you want with this, uh, with your uh, styles. So in main.css now, let's style the uh, marquee container, and then we'll look at adding in the uh, keyframes for this animation. So we have a marquee like this, and this is a, just a class selector, and we're going to set a width of this to 100%. Now this will happen anyway because it's a block level element, but if we just go ahead and inspect this, you can see here that we've got 100% width. If we remove that, it pretty much does the same thing. But if you're not using something that's a block level element, you might want to define this. And in that case, if you are using something that's not a block level element, like an anchor or something like that, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, say display block. In this case, I don't need to do this, but let's include that property anyway. So the next thing we want to do is we want to say white space, no wrap. That just means that we don't wrap the text onto the next line. That's really important because we want this to scroll uh, off the screen and then back in. Now, more importantly, what we also want to do is say overflow hidden. We don't want anything outside of this container to be shown. So if, for example, you were scrolling this maybe uh, within a smaller container, you know that even if you did, if you did get any overflow or something you know, came out of that container, it would be hidden. So now that we've got the marquee in place, we need to decide how we're going to animate this. And we're going to animate the actual span itself, like I said, inside of this element. So let's say marquee span. So the span within the marquee. You could, of course, give this a little class name and apply that to this element. But we'll just uh, sort of tie this down to a span for now. So now what we want to do is we want to display this as inline block. Now this is text but we want to uh, basically treat it as a block level element, so it's an inline block. Now what we're also going to do is we're going to set the padding on the left to 100%. Now this might seem a little bit odd, but let's check out what this does. And there we go, we can see it's disappeared. The reason that this has disappeared is because we have padding that's pushing this away, uh, sorry, in, on the span element, is pushing this uh, away. So if, for example, I was to reduce this to 20%, you can see where we're going with this. That's, this is 20%, this is 60%, 100% obviously pushes that, so it's invisible. So now we can actually animate this to go uh, to the left, and then it would look like it's scrolling. And then if we uh, repeat the animation, that means that we just get this sort of infinite scrolling effect. So we need to define the keyframes for our animation. So we're using CSS3 animations here obviously not supported everywhere, so do be careful about how you do use this for reliability. Um, and I'm only going to be demonstrating this with the WebKit vendor prefix. You're going to want to include other vendor prefixes. Uh, check out a website like Can I Use just to see which ones you do need. Um, or, and you also want to provide the non-prefix version as well. But for simplicity, I'm just going to go with the WebKit prefix. So. We start this uh, CSS rule with an at, and then we use the uh, the WebKit vendor prefix here. So WebKit keyframes, 
and then we give it a name after here. So I'm going to call this scroll. Now, if it wasn't vendor prefixed, you would obviously just get rid of this. So if you were doing this for all browsers, you would do something like the following. So you'd say keyframes and up here you would do maybe Moz for Mozilla. But like I said, I'm just going to uh, use WebKit for simplicity. But go ahead and test this out on other browsers just to make sure it works. So what we're going to be using is something a little bit strange. We're going to be using the WebKit transform property or the transform CSS transform property, obviously vendor prefix with WebKit. And we're going to be using the translate transform. So a little bit about um, animations with CSS. We give a percentage here. Um, and basically this means the... Uh, uh, the points in which it animates. So for example, if I was to do 0% and then 10% and then 20%, I would enter my CSS rules in here and that would at 10% do something different, at 20% do something different. Now in this case, all we're doing is we're scrolling from right to left. So we just need zero to 100%. If you want to do something fancy in the middle of this, you could do. Um, so for zero percent, we're gonna say WebKit transform so the CSS transform property and we're going to translate this so translate basically just moves something around so let's take a look at how this actually does work so on the CSS property at the moment for this animation the animation hasn't taken place because we've not provided um, the WebKit animation or the animation property and telling it which animation to use but if I just do a little bit of testing on here so I'm going to say WebKit transform and I'm going to translate this now let's, uh, at first I'm going to choose zero, 0, So this is how the animation is going to start. Now to end, what happens if I give a percentage for this first value here? Now that needs to be minus because we're bringing this back on itself. So minus 10 here, all we're doing is translating the element, which is basically just moving its position. So here we're minusing this. If we were to do the same on this, so minus 50%, you can imagine that that would move up and down within the element it's in, so within its container. But we obviously want that one to stay at zero, and we want to end up with the translate property here on the x-axis to be 100%. And that, if we just reduce that, that's sneaked out to the left there. So we know that we want to start at zero, and then what we want to do is we want to translate this to be minus 100% on the x-axis. So now what we can do is um, apply the animation to this span. At the moment it's not working because we've got our animation up here defined, but we need to say to this span, we'll use this scroll animation that we created here. So we say WebKit animate again you would have to use different vendor prefixes and then include a non-prefix version as well so webkit animate we choose the name of the animation the second is the time it takes for the animation to complete in this case i'm going to choose five seconds you can also choose a millisecond value as well uh, in this case that would be too quick um, or you can also do 0.5 seconds like that or emit the zero so five seconds we want to loop infinitely so we say infinite like so if you wanted this to only loop, say, once, you would just choose one here or any other number. And then we want this to be a linear animation. We, we don't want it to ease in and out. Uh, you can choose something like ease in out, for example, but we'll just have linear. You can go ahead and play around with those, though. So now when we refresh, ah, oops, let's change this to animation, not animate. And there we go. So now we've got this going from... Um, 0% to 100% in its animation and it's 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 uh, restarting itself over and over again because we have infinite set it's linear and we're using that scroll animation here that starts translating at zero and ends with minus 100 on the x-axis uh, so for example if you did want to use something like ease in out you could do and you'll notice the change here it sort of eases in and then as it gets to the end it just slows down that very little bit. So, you know, you can play around with these things. But basically, that is how we create properly a marquee with CSS3 animations.